one. All right. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Wherever you are in the world, it's Ron Deasy again, part of Net Effect Media, Go to Gay International Film Festival. We got some more guests here. We got the beautiful Ashita here from Beyond Blue, the main actress, and we got Dr. Archuria back here again. How are you guys doing today? Thank you. How about you? I'm great. I'm great. Ashita, how are you doing today? Morning. It's a good Sunday morning, and I have never been better dressed on a Sunday morning. So it, it, it's there you go. Me. You look you look fabulous too. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so we got the main actress here. So I'm gonna jump right into it. So Ashita, um, how did you get approached to do this role? Um, uh, Ron, I knew the uh, director Zanane uh, from before. Like we hung out a couple of times, and I remember him quite distinctly. Um, he came to my house, and uh, he had a very clear idea of how he wanted Janvi to be the character. And he just called me and said, "There's a role, there's a film that I'm doing, and I don't think there's anyone better fitting than you. I'd like to read by the script. It's a very different script, and uh, if you're on for it, then I really want to, you know." make this with you and uh, he came home we had a, a very it was it's a very different script i've never heard anything like this especially when you talk about uh, hindi films we do not have uh, uh, this kind of a structure of a film and i was totally blown away and i distinctly remember he said you are uh, just the right uh, very bubbly kind of a person for this i was like dude i i am the i am i am the girl usually in the room with a straight face how did he see that bubbliness in me i have no idea but um, and the best thing was that zanane has this this comfort this ease that he can talk about films that that we can do a scene so i was just there on on board with that nice nice so i know uh tushar um this was his first film was this your first film uh no actually uh, and tushar has also uh, he's a veteran tushar is uh, a very uh, known uh, theater artist he he was i was given the introduction of tushar being he's done various uh, very important ad films he's done a couple of films too this was his first film as the lead i believe and tushar is a visiting faculty at one of the most uh, uh, the most uh, respected uh, institute called national school of drama we've had some legends from there and he was actually a visiting faculty at that point in time so uh, I was told that he is opposite me, and I was very, very nervous. As like I've got someone who's actually teaching acting, and I mm. had uh, just wrapped up one session of another movie, uh, which which is called Kill the Rapist, and uh, oh. then I got onto this. But uh, this it, this was shot at my hometown, Ahmedabad. That's where I'm born and brought up. So uh, this is a, a very this would be the first of its kind for me. Yes. So that's how we got on board. Got it. Okay. So I watched the film. I had to watch it twice because uh, after the awesome. first time I was kind of confused and Dr. Acharya told me about it. I was like, oh, okay. Makes sense. I had to go back and watch it and everything put together. But um, what was one of the difficult scenes to shoot that you did in that, in that movie? What, what, had, what made you take a lot of takes or you had to really get in character or focus? What was one of the most challenging ones? So uh, of the other films that I've done, the best thing that was about this uh, films, especially the scene structure, Zanani and the entire production team gave, gave us this liberty to um, shoot a, a scene because we had long scenes. We had uh, less cuts and we had long scenes. So what they would do is the director's approach, he would have a certain approach as to how he wants the scene done, how the marking has to be done. Then he would give us two extra takes as to how uh, the male actor, Tushar, would want it or I would want it. So we would have, for certain takes, three point of views, which is very different from you know the other kind of films that I've done. And then he would choose which is the best to go with. So I remember there was this scene when um, Tushar, the, uh, I mean... Uh, Janvi falls in love with the uh, the main character, but the underlying the, the audience knows that he's the one who is the killer of the mother, right? So I I knew it, but then underlying I couldn't have revealed too much. So she was at a very confusing stage. She doesn't know this person. She has fallen in love. Neither we have shown 
once that we have you know kissed or we have hugged there's there's no physical way of showing that they are actually in love so that subtlety was very 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 layered very very difficult so she, she's lost her mother she's falling in love this is such a you know a, a difficult time for her but still to show that pleasantness that that was there's a scene uh, where they are doing that if i hope you have seen they have done that uh, the gujarati dance we have a dance sequence and then mm -hmm. we are holding hands but she is not sure if she should get into it the, that was the most difficult part because we didn't want to give the whole thing away but still make a point so th that was definitely the most difficult for me mm okay you know what was difficult for me um watching <laughs> the film uh, I don't know if you if it happened for you, but when you read the script, knowing that you were gonna die at the end, <laughs> how'd you feel about that? I was so upset. I was. <laughs> how'd you feel Good about boy. that? Like, oh, I have to die, and the guy gets to live on. <laughs> you know, I actually, you know, in uh, Hindi cinema, it said that if wherever, if you see, if you know, of course, the stalwarts like say Shah Rukh Khan or whoever, if the hero dies in the end. He's always considered to be a hit. You know, this is this is how it goes here. So mm -hmm. you you get away. I am glad that you could feel sorry for my character because then I feel we have done justice to the ending because you <laughs> feel that, right? So yeah. I felt very good. There's a good feeling that you know I did it all, but I, I I'm a, sort of a martyr kind of a feeling to it. So I quite enjoyed it. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kapil, uh, take it away. Well, um, I have a couple of questions for Ishita and um, and um, and the one for Dr. Acharya. Uh, so we'll start with Ishita. Um, the the award that the film got was um, was a jury award, and uh, those are the difficult ones because it's um, it's a vote, and uh, our jury is nine judges. Uh, Ron is one of them, uh, and uh, the, the vote was obviously unanimous. That's why it got the award. And it got an award for originality and uh, being associated with a couple of hundred films from India um, in the past a couple of decades. Um, most of the films from India are, as they say, inspired by uh, foreign films. Right then, yes. and then if, if you speak with the producer or director, uh, they would uh, conveniently uh, not mention which film it was so-called inspired from, right? But we all know, and we won't get too much into that. Um, so Beyond Blue actually got the award for its original story, and and I think that um, if if a filmmaker, whether it's a producer or a director or, you know, the cast, the crew, uh, the writer, the editor, if if they if they take the challenge of creating a new story, it's a huge risk, right? Because right. you don't know how it's going to be accepted. Whereas if you, <clears throat> a crude word is, if you rip off a Hollywood film you kind of think that this will work, right? But then where's your creativity if you're copying and, and, and getting inspired? And, and that's the reason why uh, this film got the award. I'm giving you a little background before I ask my questions and I get a prompt from Ron that this is the difficult one. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is kind of in continuation to what your answer was to Ron about knowing that your character dies in the end, how did you feel about it? And so it's kind of connected with that. Uh, like most films from India, um, the male actor has a dominant role and it's not only India, it's, it's, all, across, it's all across the globe. Um, and so the screen presence of a male actor is generally more than the female actor. Specifically in Beyond Blue, you, your role as compared to the screen time with the male character was a lot less, right? Did that <clears throat> come as a deterrent or did it ever come as 
you know, let me scratch and see whether I should really do this. And if not, why did you do it? It's pretty much a similar question to what Ron asked, but I'm, I'm highlighting these two points before you answer. My question see, is wrong, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I uh, see, um, I get your point, I understand, because when my mom was watching it and she anticipated my presence on the screen. So she was like, oh my God, I was waiting now and I'm going to actually see you on the screen. But see, uh, right now also, even in India, though largely said, yes, a lot of films are still uh, firmly, like we have the male protagonist, right? But even so, I believe today, it's all about the story. Whose story is it? Or sometimes it's the actor, it's the actor's story. Sometimes it's the director, it's the director's point of view or the story. In this case, uh, I feel it's, it's, the, it, it's uh, the male character's story. It's what is, with, what is going on with him, right? And as far as roles are concerned, I have always felt, uh, and we can't really compare this to the mainstream commercial, you know, the musical Bollywood film to this, because over there, many times, uh, female artists are considered like props or they're just the beloved and we have to just dance around and no, even <laughs> not prominent scenes are there, right? Mm -hmm. But as far as this one is concerned, when I read the script, I felt there was more um, uh, chemistry or more equation with my mother's role and Tushar's role. I felt that that was, that was more needed in it. So in this case, this is all in all a story. It's a script. And... Uh, see, one of my favorite Indian actors are Marhum uh, Irfan Khan sir, right? So for me, I feel that uh, it doesn't matter even if you appear for one scene, but if you've made your point as, as to why are you in the film, and if you if you make, if you give it 100% justice, that one scene will take it away. If you've seen Heather, for example, you see how he comes in, like totally takes the film to another level. In this story, I feel Janvi comes in and uh, this film has been very beautifully divided into chapters, which are colors. So if you've seen once I come in and then the pink chapter. So this is one of the aspects, one of the thing that happens with Tushar's character, right? This is what Manas is the main protagonist of the film. So my screen time being there or not being there, I don't believe should be so much of a highlight because I was there, I will, I died till the end, that's important. But uh, I don't, as an actor, I really don't feel that the screen time is as important as the impact and as in when I am on the screen, what am I doing there? So not for this film. I do understand, Kapil, where you're coming from because there have been many films where you want actually a little glimpse of the actress doing something more than the, you know, the masala stuff. But no, I'm not for this film. This film, if I'm coming right in the beginning or the story doesn't have its root the way it should. So I am completely happy and I read the whole narration. And uh, I, in fact, found it very effective as to uh, what, uh, where I come in. Right, right. Well, my second question is, um, what's your next project? Um, right now, I'm actually auditioning for a lot of uh, web series. Mm -hmm. So I was to do a very interesting, because I'm also a singer. So I, I, was, I am actually prepping up to do a sort of a musical, but not, uh, uh, not the one which is pre-dubbed. We, it's a very ambitious kind of a project where we have to, this is also more or less like uh, sing soundish. So I'm actually prepping up for that role where I can be the singer. It's a jazz singer. So I can't say much about it, but this is what I'm prepping up for. Right, right. No, I do remember a few years back, um, we, we organized quite a few events, Ron and me, um, about 10 in the year. Golden Gate is one of them. Um, and, and Ron, Ron is part of all the other events. And one of the events we do is a Dandia night. It became so big that from one night, it became two nights and then three nights. And of course, this year it's been completely decimated. And so I remember Dr. Acharya had mentioned about you, uh, for, for one of those, uh, performances, I believe in 2018 or 19. He, yeah. So that I remember that. He said you do perform for large, uh, high-end Dandia uh, events, right? 
Yes, yes, I do. In fact, I've I've toured with Sajib Ajib and Mika even too. Like in, even in San Francisco, we've had our gigs there with them. Oh, so okay. yeah, not just Dandia. We uh, I I get to do uh, two three different genres of music. Yeah. Great, great, great. Well, the next question. Thank you, Ashita. The next question is for Dr. Achari, and then back to Ron um, to to close um, the event. Uh, the question is uh, an afterthought that came uh, after your last interview regarding um, a very surprising um, observation uh, that that Ron made was that you left the film ending such that you could make a remake. Uh, I'm sorry, you could make a, a part two. <laughs> so my question is that um, there have been films where the supporting actor, not necessarily male, female, right? Has a shorter role like Ishita did in Beyond Blue. And I'm talking of a very successful franchise of films and I'll tell you which one. And that particular character played a supporting role and a small one. But that character made such an impact and she died. She died in the film, okay? But the character made such an impact based on data that was collected post the film. You know, here they do a lot of audience reaction and see like, you know, which character was most uh, accepted. And they found a way <laughs> to bring her back. I'm talking about Fast and Furious, Ron. And I'm talking about Lippy. <laughs> How beautifully they brought her back, right? I think she died in Fast and Furious 3 and suddenly you see her in Fast and Furious 5 back then. So the question is that if you do make part two, <laughs> Beyond Blue 2, I mean, that could be the name. Uh, would you consider, with very creative scripting, bringing Ishita back? Because she did make an impact in the film. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to tell that Ishita's role was, uh, maybe as far as if you consider the minutes, it was less. Yeah. Well, but, I guess that's what the script dictated. Yes, right. So, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it became very, very important mm -hmm. when she dies. Everybody remembered her. Right. Even though Manas was living at the time. Right. People remember Ishita role because, so, and people, it was an accidental one, but even though people will remember that even uh, there was a love between Manas, it was not a chila chalo, means a routine love as we are seeing in other films. It was rather divine love, I'll tell you. Right. And uh, because uh, in the film, Janvi died, people remember, and it, it gave more importance to Janvi. So people will always remember of, because of that. And therefore, it becomes very, very important role uh, than any other roles in the film. So and part two, will you bring it? As, as suggested by Ron yesterday, uh, about uh, to make a, not a remake, but a second part of the Beyond Blue 2. My bad, I, I didn't mean remake. Right. It, it, okay, it's okay. And, and you were generally, uh, it, 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 it was an experimental film. It was not a business film. Right. It, it was an or experiment, but we, we are successful into, into that. Right. And we are very proud that we won this uh, jury's award. It, it is uh, rather better than any other award rather. But jury awards are, the, are, are are definitely more prestigious than the regular ones. Um, and so, yeah, I agree with what you said, uh, Dr. Charya, because I can um, see Ron visually very upset seeing the demise of uh, the character in the film. Yeah. And, and Ron, Ron rarely gets upset. So <laughs> <laughs> it's back. Oh, yeah, that's actually... Could I intervene? I actually think it's a good time because this is the time when you see um, that uh, uh, women protagonists are more uh, in, that's not the right word to say it, because you would have never seen a Wonder Woman 
do so well as to have its own you know it has its own audience and i think even in india you you see we have many stalwarts uh, many stalwart actresses who are pulling at this uh, uh, women protagonist role so well it's not a, it's not a see them putting in your head rajesh ji but it's it's i think it's a great afterthought <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah i think that um, that's definitely something for um dr acharya to think about uh, back to you ron and uh, you can take it from here all right so um i brought this up last time i'm bringing up again ashita i need a, a favor from you uh bug dr acharya about making a beyond blue 2 maybe you call it beyond red i don't know <laughs> maybe you didn't really die maybe you just really was really injured and you ended up in a coma and you come back for revenge or something like that i don't know I, you can't you can't do that to me I, i'm very upset but anyways um it was a great film beyond blue everybody go check it out um once again we have the beautiful ashita here we have the brilliant uh, dr acharya here and we have kapil and myself rondizi um everybody have a good night good evening good morning and we'll see you guys next time all right thanks ron Thank you thank you Ron thank you Kapil ji and I'm very very happy and we are elated thank you Golden Gate International Film Festival thank you thank you thank you, thank you Dr thank you, thank you. Right. Thank you. Right. Have a nice day thanks Ron bye, bye.